with that, actually, with semantic memory, literally just launched or announced today, um, we have Chris who integrated semantic memory with Chat Copilot. So I'm actually going to hand off to Chris to talk a little bit more about this, what people can expect, uh, and what what got involved uh, in bringing sure. this. The um, just to give credit where credit's due, it's the team effort that involved uh, Ben and Tao. Also, um, Tao's on the call, and um, of course, Deb is uh, deeply embedded. So um, I'm happy to present on this stuff. Um, so for uh, you know, just like a lot of people in the community, uh, Chat Copilot was using the um, memory connector through Semantic Kernel. And um, with this change, we pivoted away from using iSemantic text memory and targeting the semantic memory platform um, in using the um, memory client, um, which is similar, but um, a little bit more of a developed architecture platform in the sense that um, there's a well-defined processing pipeline that can be hosted um, in a variety of uh, methods either in process or uh, out of process as a separate deployment. Um, one of the things that, um, one of the pain points that came up all the time with Copilot chat was for each chat session that was created, it created three different indexes or containers in the vector database, which for ACS, we'd run out of space and then it would be a train wreck. Um, and so with this change, we actually are converging to use a single index for all the chats. So it completely eliminates that issue. Um, so that's a huge pain point addressed. In addition, we get all the goodness of the semantic uh, memory pipeline that Devis uh, demoed in terms of the ability to process other document types like Word documents. And then as we continue to make progress, then that should just light up in uh, Copilot chat. Um, now that we have that alignment. In addition, we've done some work that I'll demo in a minute where the um, Tau uh, was on point for driving this, did a great job, I think, the um, which is integrating citations into the chat experience, um, which is uh, became possible through this alignment. And um, one thing, I'm going to share screen. Stop sharing. My window here. Is reviewing issues. So, right. So, in the Copilot chat repo, um, as part of this, we introduced a new project called Memory Pipeline, um, which um, you know is effectively some added complexity. Uh, if you're running this, you can choose whether I mean, if you're just running in the dev experience, then nothing's changed. You don't need to really worry about this. But if you're deploying, um, it, it gives uh, it's basically a different scale point because you're going to want to scale the memory pipeline differently than the API um, and also as a resiliency boundary. Um, the uh, if the memory pipeline any failure there you don't want to take down the api or whatever so that's why we've architected it very similar to the way um devis has in the um, examples in the semantic memory repo um so just to call that out um it you know if you're just using this in your dev box it's, you're not going to notice it but as you start to deploy and deal with other scenarios it, it is going to crop up so just to call that out um but all the all of our deployment scripts um, have been updated um, to uh, account for this stuff. So if you go through our deployment process, um, uh, that should be accounted for. Oh, and just to call out one other thing, um, the uh, configuration changed quite a bit. Um, but again, if you're using the scripts, uh, this should all be accounted for. Um, so this app settings is um, uh, effectively a breaking change. Um, so in this, uh, here's a deployed version, and um, so I'll just ask a basic question. I mean, you should see everything. I've uploaded a document ahead of time. Um, you can see this is our ACS instance, which just says one index. The, that's the default that we have configured. And, uh, we'll just get a basic control test here.
slow. I think I must have just be waking it out. Oh, hey, it answered. Um, so yeah, it's a prime number. I, oh, no, no, it hasn't answered. Here it comes. That's not a prime number. OK, excellent. All right, so now we'll ask a question that should hit the document and we'll get the citation. So just makes the chat copilot experience we've all come to know and love. Um, but with a different memory back end. First of all, we're waiting for this. Anthony is asking in the chat, yeah. is semantic mm -hmm. memory intended to be hosted as its own dedicated service or within an existing process? So we have both flavors uh, available uh, in Chat Copilot. So uh, there's an in-process version that's the default for if you're looking at it on your dev box, because it's just kind of a pain in the ass and you don't really need it for this, pardon my expression. You don't really need it for the, um, uh, you know, those type of scale issues if you're just running dev testing and little one off cases. And um, but then if you're deploying at any point of scale, um, you know, the usage for the pipeline is probably going to be quite a bit different for the API. So you might want to scale it differently. If you have them hosted together and then you scale it up, um, you're going to have waste, you're paying for wasted compute on the API kind of sort of. Um, and so um, in our case, I think for the int, we're deploying both services to the same service plan. But then if you wanted to really scale them independently, you'd probably uh, have two different service plans and then deploy them separately like that. Um, so yes, they're both available. Um, actually, I can call out in the config here. The orchestration type in process or distributed is where that's controlled. And so by default, it's in process. If you run it on your dev box, you're going to get that local experience. And then if you pivot to distributed, then you'll take on that extra complexity. All right, so you can see we got the list. Um, you can see from the prompt info that it got the document. So it definitely hit the document. And then of course, we can see now quite visibly the citation um, that was used as the um, source data for the model response, which includes the file name, the snippet, the relevance score, and then also a, um, if we look, there's a, uh, there should be a one note, um, but you'll see um, basically like a footnote inserted in um, um, as additional UX. I can't spot it right now, um, but uh, yeah, I think that's really great. Um, and that's basically it, besides any questions. Awesome. Well, thank you, Chris, for showing this um, off. Chris, actually, I have a question. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things I saw initially, um, which I think was either new to me or I, I didn't see before, was it calculated the amount of tokens. There was like a little, uh, is that new or is, or is that something I must have overlooked before? Um, I think it, it, it always did it before, mm -hmm. but um, in the past, the token report was always in the this prompt info right, dialogue. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now with the citation, I think it becomes a little. Is it out here too? Oh no, it's not out here. No, it's always been in here. I think. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Which it's important to give visibility because token usage, of course, translates into real dollars. <laughs> yeah. 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 